The following BLTV program is brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Please enjoy. Welcome to Learn About Law. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law. I hope you find this video and podcast helpful. If you need some help, please feel free to call us at 630-324-6666. We offer free consultations in many areas of law, and we have several geographic locations for your convenience. We serve all of Illinois, and we're also happy to meet with you and provide most legal services virtually without requiring you to leave your home. Enjoy the video. Hi, I'm Chelsea Janrath, an Illinois family law attorney. In this video, I will be walking you through how to fill out a short-term guardian appointment form. This form is from the Illinois Legal Aid website, and what you fill out may look slightly different depending on where you receive it from, but it should contain about the same basic information. As always, this video is not legal advice and is for educational purposes only. A short-term guardian is responsible for a child for one year or less. The guardianship can be renewed by creating a new appointment. The parent or guardian picks the short-term guardian and can be revoked by the parents at any time. The parent or guardian does not need to go to court, but the agreement of guardianship must be in writing. To begin, you will want to fill in the county in which you will be filling this or filing this form in. That's typically um, where you or the child resides. This section here, these few paragraphs, outlines that a separate form must be submitted for each child. And if you are a part of the US military, you may appoint a short-term guardian for the period of your active duty service plus 30 days. There cannot be more than one short-term guardian at a time. In section one, you will fill out the parent's full name here and address. Then you will fill in the child's full name here and the birth date. Section two, you will be filling in the guardian's information to become a guardian in Illinois, a person must be at least 18 years old, be a resident of the United States, be of sound mind, not be legally disabled, and not have a felony conviction that involved harm or threat to a child. You will want to fill in the guardian's full name on the first line, address, and these additional lines here. Moving on to page two. Section three, you will be selecting when the guardianship appointment will begin. If it will begin on a date that you state in writing that you're no longer willing or able to take care of the child or make decisions concerning the child, you will select the first box. If it will be on a date that your physician states you are no longer willing or able to make um, decisions or take care of the child, select the second box. If the appointment will begin on the date that you're admitted as an inpatient to a hospital or other healthcare institution, you will select the third box. If there's a specific date that this appointment will be starting on, you will select this box and enter the date here. If the appointment will begin on the day you're signing and dating this form, then you select this box. If you are part of the military and are going on active duty, you select this box and enter the date in which your active duty service begins. If this guardianship will be effective upon an administrative separation, you will select this box here. Um, admit Administrative separation means a parent, legal guardian, legal custodian, or primary caretaker has been arrested, um, has been incarcerated, has been removed or deported from the United States, or if there has been receipt of official communication by federal, state, or local authorities regarding immigration enforcement that gives reasonable notice that care and supervision of the child by a parent will be interrupted and cannot be provided. You will select this. If there is another reason or date that the appointment will become effective, you will select this here and put other. 
section four, you will be selecting one of these options for when the guardianship will terminate. Um, typically, guardianship will terminate 365 days or one year after the date it becomes effective unless it terminates sooner by some event. Um, if you are wanting less than 365 days for any of these reasons, you will select these. You will select the first box if on the day you state in writing that you're willing and able to make, carry out, and make decisions for the child. Again, you will select this. Same thing with the physician. On the date you're discharged from the hospital or other healthcare institution. If there's a specific amount of days, you will select this and then enter the days here after the effective date. If you are a member of the military and going on active duty, you select this and put the date your active duty service is scheduled to end. Select this box if there is an administrative separation or if there's any other reason or amount of time, you will select this box and then enter in the reason there. Moving on to page three. This agreement must be signed and witnessed by at least two people who are at least 18 years old. And a witness cannot also be the person that is going to be the short-term guardian. So in five here, you will select or enter in the date and sign your name as the parent. Section six will be the witnesses' signatures and information. So witness one will sign name, address. Same thing, witness two, sign name, address. Section seven should be filled out by the guardian. Um, this will be how the guardian is stating that they are accepting the short-term guardianship appointment at the day, the date in which you are signing, guardian's signature. Now, if both parents are consenting to the guardianship, you will want to enter the other parent's name here and then full address the date and the other person, other parent's name signature. There's a note here that the signature of a consenting parent is not necessary if the child's other parent has passed away, the whereabouts of the other parent are not known, the other parent is not willing or able to make the decisions for the child's care, or the parents were never married and no court issued an order establishing parentage. The last page outlines the duties of a short-term guardian. Legal guardianship lets someone that is not a parent make decisions for the child just as the parent would. The person with authority to make decisions about a child's care or property is called the child's guardian. So if you want to read more about that, you can read this last page through. Last thing is that it is a recommended that you attach a copy of the child's birth certificate a custody order or allocation of parental responsibilities order if one exists for the child or any other guardianship order if one does exist. This is not required but it is recommended um, so you may want to file that with this form. That is all for this video. Thanks for watching. To learn more about guardianship, you can visit our page linked below. Be sure to leave any questions you have in the comment section and subscribe for more legal content daily. Hello again, this is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law. I hope you enjoyed the video and podcast. If you did, we'd love it if you'd subscribe to our channel. If you need legal help in this or any other area of law, please do not hesitate to reach out and schedule a consultation. Most consultations are free and all can be conducted remotely if you'd like. Please email us, book online, or call us at 630-324-6666. We have many locations for your convenience and we serve all of Illinois. So thanks again for watching.